In this video, we continue with object-oriented programming, this time talking about inheritance. So what is inheritance? Well, an advantage of object-oriented programming is being able to reuse code for objects. When you inherit a class, all those methods, all those attributes of the class are available in the class that is inheriting the other. Now, the constructors are not inherited. There is a major misconception that constructors are inherited, and they are not. Those constructors of the class that is being inherited is actually called, and we'll be talking about that and proving that today. Now, when you use inheritance, this creates what is known as a base class or super class, and something also known as a child class or subclass. So a child class, subclass, those are the same thing. A base class, super class, those are the same things as well. So how do you know when a class should inherit another class? Well, one of the things I hear commonly is, oh, just look for similarities of attributes and methods. That is the wrong way to go about it, and you'll see why in a moment. So let's use that common uh, advice, looking for similarities of attributes and methods. Let's use that advice and see why it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and create a teacher object, which means we need a class for a teacher. Now, remember, we use the has a relationship. So what does a teacher have? Teacher has a name, teacher has an ID, teacher has a subject. So do you see some similarities between teacher and student? And you may be saying, oh, I see some similarities. Both teacher class and student class have similar attributes, name and ID. We can have one inherit the other so we don't need to recreate those attributes. No, we cannot. And that is a common mistake that is made. Inheritance follows what is known as an is a relationship. So if the teacher class inherits student, we are then saying a teacher is a student. That statement is not true. If the student class inherits teacher, we are saying then a student is a teacher. That statement is not true. Well, you may be saying, well, what's the big deal? It's only one other class. But think about this. Are there other faculty members or employees of the school who aren't teachers? If we add them using the teacher class as a super class or the student class as a super class, our object-oriented programming gets very confusing and extremely convoluted very quickly. We need to think of a way we can have those attributes, name and ID, belong to a class that student can inherit and also teacher can inherit. So what can we do? Well, we can create what is called a person class that student and teacher can inherit. That means I can put name and ID inside the person class. So let's test the solution by using the is a relationship. A teacher is a person. That statement is true. A student is a person. That statement is also true. Not only does this work, this will allow us to add other members to the school who are not students or teachers. We can add janitorial staff. A janitor is a person. We can add secretaries. A secretary is a person. We can add guidance counselors. A guidance counselor is a person. We can add principals. A principal is a person. And all these objects of our person class for this uh, thing, which we are using uh, school, all of them are going to have a name. All of them are going to have an ID. Now, for this demonstration, we're just doing teachers and students. Uh, let's update our code from where we left off and actually create a person class and then inherit that class and then have teacher and student inherit that class. And now that we're into our code, we can put inheritance into play. Now you'll notice that this program looks a little different than where we left off. What I did was I uh, got rid of those set and get methods inside my student class because it's going to be inheriting those from the person class. Um, I also created a public class person. So let's go ahead and let's take think about what does teacher and student need? Well, it needs name which is going to be a string. It all, they also share ID, which is also a string. Now, when I'm looking down in my public class student, I have name and ID. I can get rid of those because it's going to inherit the person class. The next thing I need to do is I need to create a teacher class. So public class teacher. And the one thing a teacher has that a student does not have is a subject. And we'll do that as a string as well. So the one thing that a teacher has that a student doesn't have is subject. What does a student have that a teacher does not have? It has a grade, the grade level they are in. Now, just by creating classes, no inheritance is taking place. So here's how inheritance works. 
right after you create your class, public class teacher, you type in inherits, and then we type in the name of the class it's inheriting, which is person. And inherits person, I go down to student, inherits person. So now any object that I create that is a teacher will be able to have name and ID with it. Any uh, student uh, object I create will have name and ID with it as well. So down here, when I do dim this student one is new student, it's gonna have those attributes, name, ID, and grade. What we need to do now is we need to talk about how the constructors work because I cannot access name and ID from the student class even though it's inheriting because it's set to private. So if I try to do this, public sub set name, and I try to do, let's see here, let's just, you know, we'll say in as string, and if I try to do name equals in, I can't do it. It tries to set it to set name. Well, that's not what we need. So what we need to do is we need to be able to do those things. So we remember we said with inheritance, all attributes and methods are added. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take all those set and get methods that we had in student and we're gonna put inside the person class. Let's fast forward so we can talk about that happening. So now we have set name. We can set the name because the name belongs to the person class. We can set ID. We can also get name and get ID. But you may be saying, well, how is that helpful? Because the student class and the teacher class can't access those. But remember, because we have inherited person, not only have we inherited the attributes, we have also inherited the methods. So let's go down here and let's set some values to this student one. Let's go ahead and do that now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this student one dot. And now you'll see where it has set name, get name, um, set, get, set ID, get ID. So we can just set name and we're gonna say Jesse cause that was their name. We're gonna do this student one dot set ID. And we're gonna say his ID was uh, 53001. So now we have Jesse, we have set his name, we set his ID because we've inherited those methods. But what if we are not going to know the name of our student or their ID? We can do the same thing that we did in the last video. But what if we do know the names and we want to do it in the constructor. What if we have a question that says, hey, go ahead and do it by the constructor. Okay, so here is where it gets a little, not tricky, not hard. You just got to pay close attention here. We said the constructor is not inherited. The first thing we need to do, I am in my super class or my base class, which is person. I'm going to create my constructor here. How do I create a constructor? public sub new. Now I need to give it a signature because I'm gonna pass name and ID. So what I'm gonna do, by val in as a string, and then I'm gonna do by val I as string. Now what I need to do here is I need to set name to the parameter in ID to the parameter I. Now if we're creating a student object, there's one other thing that a student needs. Now you'll see these red lines and that's because it doesn't have a uh, constructor. So we'll need to fix that and we will, we will. But what if I want to set Jesse 53001 as his ID and his grade 11 using the constructor? Because there may very well have be a question where we have to do that. And that is where constructors are not inherited, but they are invoked by the first line. So let's handle the one for student. So we're going to do public sub new. And what is it, what are we going to pass? We're going to pass up the name. So I'll do by val. I'm going to do in a string. I'm going to do um, i as string. And then I'm going to do g as integer. Now you might be saying, well, hold on. You're not going to be able to use in and i because in and i are not part of the class. And you're absolutely right. It's not, even though we've inherited person. 
Now, you'll see there is a red line here, and this is where the misconception that constructors are inherited that we're about to address. So what we're gonna do is we need to call the super constructor, which will accept two parameters, in and i. So I need to pass up to this constructor a parameter that it will take as in, a parameter it will take as i, and then assign it to name and id. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So what we need to do is, and you have to do it in this order. So if I try to do it this way, so I'll show you the wrong way uh, to do it. If I do grade equals g, and I do my base, which means my base class dot, now you'll see all the attributes we have. We're gonna call the constructor, which is called new, and what I'm gonna pass up to it is I'm gonna pass up in, and I'm gonna pass up I. Now you'll see we have a red line. The reason you have a red line is because whether you want to or not, the super constructor does get invoked first. So by putting it first, you'll see it gets rid of that red line. If you do not have this here, then what will happen is, if you have a default constructor here, one with no signature, if I get rid of this, what will happen is, it will call the default constructor, whether you want it to or not, and it must be the first line of the code. So let me just go ahead and let me, uh, let me cut this out. So, or just comment it out, I don't have to cut it. If I comment it out, you'll see here, those red lines are gone, even if, I take this out, it is still going to call the default super constructor without parameters, whether I want it to or not. And the reason it's going to do that is when I create a student object, it must invoke or call the constructor in the super class because it cannot give the object these attributes until that constructor is called. So when people say that constructor is inherited, that's that's not true. It's calling a default constructor, even if you don't have it, so it can give the object name and ID or whatever attributes it is inheriting. So let's go ahead, let's uncomment this, and let's talk about what's happening when we do it the uh, correct way. And I don't want to comment that again, I want to uncomment. Okay, so we go back down here. So we have my base new my base dot new in i. That's going to invoke the super constructor again. I'm going to pass up in and i. What is in and i? Based on what I have passed to this sub, this subclass constructor. But grade, I don't need to pass up to the super constructor because grade is only available to the student class. So now when I dim this student as new student, I can do Jesse. I can do his ID number. And I can also do his grade. And you can see that I have no red lines. Now, sure, it may work, but we need to test that it works. And it will work. So we can do console.writeLine. Because remember, we have those get methods. I can, I can do um, name. And then what I can do, I can do this student one dot get name Because I've assigned it. I've assigned it. So now I can get it console.writeLine, I can do, uh, what's next? Oh, ID, so ID is next. And I just use that, this student one, dot get ID, because that method has been inherited, console.writeLine, and because my methods are public, I can access them from anywhere. And then grade level, and then I can do this student one, dot get, Let's see here. We have set name. Oh, it's not going to be. We need. Um, we need to do grade now because this is uh, private. We need a get grade method. Public uh, function. Get grade. So we're going to do by val or we don't need to uh, accept anything. We just need to return it, and that is an integer. So I'm simply going to return grade. There we go. So now I can do this student one dot get grade. I don't need to get grade in my super constructor, so or my super class. Let's go back up, make sure we don't have it. So we do, we have 
get name, we have get ID. Nope, we don't have get grade, so perfect. We can have set name, we can have set ID, we can have get name and get ID, but we don't need get grade because that is only in the inside the student class. So let's go ahead and let's handle teacher. Public sub new. Now, I need to accept in as string. Now, it doesn't have to be in. It, it can be whatever uh, we want it to be. The common practice is to use the first letter. And then this time, I'm going to do S as a string because we're accepting a subject. What I need to do is I must call my super constructor my base dot new. So my base, remember, means my base class or my super class. What am I calling from that class? I'm calling new. And then what I am doing is I'm passing up in and I'm passing up I. But I also need to set the subject. So I'm going to do subject equals S. And now that constructor will work. But what I need is I need a get subject uh, method. So public function get subject. And it's not going to accept anything. That's going to be a string. And I simply write return subject. And what that will do is that will return the subject. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create that object, this teacher one, as new teacher. And we'll say Walt is the teacher. We'll say his ID is 5300. Oh, that's a string. So 53002. And then his subject is chemistry. So notice the red line and teacher has gone away. So what I can do is I can output his name and I can output his information. So all I'm going to do is for name, I'm going to do this teacher one dot get name, his ID, no problem. This teacher one dot get ID. And then I can do, we need to do is subject. And I'm simply going to do this teacher one subject. So this teacher one dot sub or get subject. And we are good to go. So we're going to put a console dot right line to get a blank line in between these. And then we're going to output it and make sure that it works. And then we'll come back. We'll visit why it works. So let's go ahead and run our program. And you can see we have Jesse's name. We have his ID. We have his grade level. We have Walt, his ID and his subject. So when we inherit, all attributes and methods are inherited. We need to be able to access these attributes. How do we access these attributes? By calling this super constructor. How do we call this super constructor the constructor of our super class? Because we never dimensionalize anybody as a person. We dimensionalize them as a student or as a teacher. So let's take a look at this teacher one. Whether you have this line or not, the default constructor will be called. Now, because we overrode uh, the constructor, we created one with a different signature. That's why we were getting the red line. So we must call that constructor. We pass up in and I. We call the constructor in our super class by using the code my base, which means my base class or my super class dot what am I calling? I'm calling the new, which is my constructor. I'm passing up in an I. Because our class in our, or our constructor in our super class only deals with name and ID, I don't need to pass up grade level to the constructor in our super class. I only need to pass it to the one in my uh, sub class. So in this one, I passed subject. We said uh, S equal to subject. And then in my uh, student one, Where's my student one? In our student one, we set G to grade, but notice we called that super, or the constructor in our super class again. And because our super class has uh, get ID, set ID, get name, and uh, set name, so we have our set methods, we have our get methods, and because they are public, I can access them from outside of the class. And that's why your attributes are private because you can still access them by invoking the super constructor and one with a signature that will handle these attributes. And we have a signature here to handle those attributes. Um, all your attributes are should be set to private. 
all your methods are set to public. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. We'll see you guys in the next one.